This review is about finding the limits of this autonomous drone from a mountain biker's perspective. I've never used the expression game changer in any of my reviews and I will probably not start now either. I'll let you know why in a minute. But this is a drone that definitely will disrupt the drone market. Is that a red pill? What the? Take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. I own the original DDI Mavic Mini, which kind of was a game changer when it was first released about five years ago. But time moved fast, and I struggled with a few things. I thought the image quality was great when I first got the Mini, but there are now other drones that are way ahead. I could live with the image quality if I could find a way to film myself when biking. I only need a few seconds of footage to add some perspective to my videos. Tracking on this drone does not work, not even with third-party apps. Not even newer DJI drones do tracking very well. The best way to film myself is to use waypoints, but that's sort of a hack and takes time to set up. It's also definitely a certain amount of risk involved since there are no collision sensors on the Mini. The time it takes to make shots like these is not very desirable when your friends are waiting for you to get that bloody drone shot. It took me well over 30 minutes to get each of these shots. Now, watch this. Current mode, follow. a game changer? It could have been, or could be in the future. Let me explain. It all comes down to image quality and who the drone is aimed for. I feel that this drone is aimed at content creators, semi-professionals, considering the price tag. It's a tool to quickly, safely and easily get cool shots to upload to Instagram or YouTube and maybe mix these shots with other footage. Content creators are nowadays used to high quality cameras. Many smartphones and action cameras film with 10 bits with the ability to film in the flat profile as well. These are the standards of 2023 and will definitely be in 2024 too. This drone is from the future when it comes to usability. There is no other drone that even comes close. It's scaringly good in that department. But the camera unfortunately feels like a few years old camera. And in the end this is a camera, even if it is a flying camera. Like many cameras back in the day, the image is over sharpened, there is too much contrast, but the colors are actually okay. The footage isn't unusable. This looks decent enough and it's something I can use for my bike reviews. I get it that this is a tiny drone with a tiny camera and I shouldn't expect too much from it. It's just that the drone itself is so amazing and pocketable, it feels like a missed opportunity here. Here is my request as a semi-professional content creator to the makers of this drone. Please add a picture profile as an option that removes all digital sharpness, contrast and some of the saturation in the next firmware upgrade. This will leave room for me to match the image more easily with other cameras as well as increasing the dynamic range with maybe a stop or so. While you're at it, let me lock the white balance when I press the start button. Thank you. A promise from me, if you give me a flat picture profile, I will change this video description from what is a game changer to it is a game changer. A few things to notice. Battery time is around 10 minutes. That's absolutely plenty enough since it only takes a couple of minutes to get your shot. This is an entirely different workflow from using other drones, so you can't really compare flight times with drones such as this. 
Today it's zero degrees, some wet snow and the battery time is only around 6 to 7 minutes so I keep the drone in my inner pocket to keep it warm. It still works perfectly fine though, which is more than I can say about my GoPro, which often suddenly shuts down when it's cold despite having a full battery. Get a hard case. Even if it looks simple and practical to just put the drone in your pocket, you should protect your little friend. I use an old GoPro case to carry my hover. It fits the drone itself, a charger and also a power bank. And this power bank is good enough for 10 drone batteries. I can fly all day with this, but I do wish there was a smaller case fitting only the drone and that would fit my pocket more easily. But that case needs to be more rigid, have rounded edges to protect both me and the drone in the event of a crash, which is very likely to happen. Again? What are you trying to tell me? That I can dodge bullets? No, Neo. I'm trying to tell you that when you're ready, you won't have to. This brings me to the crash test part of this review. This drone isn't marketed as an action camera, so these findings are not about to talk down on the drone. It's first and foremost a selfie camera with lots of automated modes. But I want to use this drone as an action camera. I want to find the limits. So here's what I found out after crashing the drone pretty hard around 10 times. When riding slow in regular terrain, the follow me mode is absolutely fantastic. It sticks to me as if I had a string attached to it, and very rarely it loses me. It doesn't show on camera, but the trees are really close to the trail here. Still, the drone only crashed once when coming too close to some branches. To say that I am impressed is an understatement. When the speed increases, the drone distances itself and climbs to a higher altitude, and this poses a problem when going downhill. The drone flies too high up and can get caught in the vegetation. Another problem is a slight delay when going through corners. The drone goes wide and starts hitting trees. But as long as I go straight, I feel that the footage looks amazing here. Flying in open terrain is a much better option and the drone only lost me one time in a tight switchback. The hover is very durable thanks to its low weight and to the elastic cage, propellers and motor mounts. Here I hit one tree very hard and one of the propeller blades was bent through the cage oh, shit. and the motor was also twisted. I thought this was the end of this drone. But to my surprise, I only had to bend back the propeller blade and then it flew again as if nothing happened. This nerve-wracking experience, however, brings up the question around spare parts. From my speed test, I found that the top speed is at around the stated 24 km per hour. You could temporarily go faster and the drone will continue to follow and finally catch up once you slow down a bit. Would I want the drone to go faster? Yes, yeah, sure. Riding downhill MTB is usually a lot faster than that, but I'm okay with it considering how tiny and convenient the drone is to use. You can't have it all. I did a quick test in this jump line and to clear the jumps here I would like to go a bit faster, just a tiny bit and I have my hopes up for the next iteration of the hover. There is a dolly track mode as well which is really cool. It works best in open areas when climbing for instance. With some speed the drone can't keep up and ends up going sideways for a bit which of course could look rather cool too. As you can see here, I usually ride my bike with a 6 kilo backpack, a camera backpack. And that camera backpack contains cameras, lenses, tripods, drone and whatnot. And my hope is that I could get rid of that backpack. Just to have this GoPro that I'm filming on on my chest mount. Do some b-roll with my iPhone. And if I can keep a drone in my pocket, that means that I could get rid of that lousy backpack. And that would be a relief to say the least. I do see this drone very useful, but I also have a wish list for possible firmware upgrades and for the next iteration of the hover. 200 Robotics, don't take this the wrong way. I see a long-term relationship here 
and I see possibilities that could make this drone even more awesome. I understand the easy to use concept, but if I could have a flat picture profile option hidden away somewhere deep down in the menu, you would make me very happy. Add lock white balance on record and the footage would look even more professional. A bit higher top speed of the future Hover Air X2 would be desirable. I look a bit slow in the downhill sections. Can you get me a sports mode in the follow me function? I need the drone much closer to me when I ride fast between trees and it needs to do tighter turns too. I wouldn't mind a nice FPV look here either. The image doesn't need to have a horizontal lock. Can you see the potential? I need spare parts because I'm reckless and unconfirmed rumors say that something is on the way there. I know there's already a case available, but I need something stronger that can take a crash. The Hover is a polished drone. You don't need to fiddle with the app if you don't want to, and that is a big plus for me. There is no controller to use either, which makes this a perfect action drone when you need both hands for something else. Back to the app, changing settings or downloading the footage works flawlessly. This is how all apps should work, flawlessly when you need it, but not having to use it at all is the best part. There is no GPS on the hover, so I don't have to do any little rain dances to calibrate it every time I start it. The gimbal is only there for changing the camera angle. Stabilization works like with the GoPro, and it's really good. There are no vibrations or jelly effects introduced to the image. Top marks. So to summarize, this is an exceptional little drone that stands out from the competition in so many ways. It's small, it's super easy to use, and all functions work perfectly, every time. There's no other drone on the market that does what this drone does. If you want to film yourself biking, this is your only realistic option in my opinion. I see a fun and bright future for me using this drone, and I've already filmed my next bike review with it. Are you sure this line is clean? Yeah, of course I'm sure. I better go.